have to be a new link. Go to the basic geologic channel for a new link. Is that right? Yes. It's just you know the the, the YouTube the YouTube channel. YouTube channel for a new link. Correct? It's, it's live right now. We're live now in a new, in a new We are live there. Correct? Yeah, yeah. I'm just it's just not just here. It's just there's not there's not just here. Hey guys, sorry. We were all ready to go and it just uh, it just crapped out. So I had to rejigger everything. We're on my phone now. We're not using the regular camera that cost $1,000. We're not using that camera. We're using my phone, just so you're aware. That's what we're using right now. I'm going to give you a second to get over here. Please, if you know the other link, if you can comment where it is now, if you can put a link into it. Ms. Info, if you do go to the new thing, you should be able to share it in the old the old link so again we've created a brand new brand new live page sorry for all that we're gonna wait a second to make sure everybody gets over here let us know you're in the new place so we can be happy if you are able to also go back to the old place and tell everybody over there that we are over here now because that's what's happening. Boy, I had the other cameras all set up and it looked awesome and the sound was great and everything and it would not connect to YouTube. I don't know what was going on. It just would not, it would not connect to YouTube. So I'm really, really sorry for being late, but we're gonna try to do this anyway. If you are here joining, we are at Seven Songs with me, episode 18. I need a second because I've just been frazzled, you know, every time it's been working great. It's been working great. So, Ms. Info, are we live? Yes. And here's on my phone that I'm trying to calm down. That's not, that's what you're hearing there is not, that was last week's show or two weeks ago. Okay. It should just be called Seven Songs. I think that was what I titled it. Again, we're trying to make sure that we're live. I think we are live. It should be the latest uploaded thing. Yeah? yeah. Okay, are people there? I think people are there. People are. Okay, I'm hearing myself there. So we can turn the volume down on your phone. If you are in the new, <laughs> the new chat place, if you wanted to quickly go to the old link and let people know we are here now, provide them a link to this spot right here. That would be really cool. Sorry for the delay and everything. It's just the way it goes sometimes. But we are live now. Thumbs up, Ms. Info. Are you okay? Yeah, I found it. I can't get the link. Okay, yeah, someone else will do it. Someone else will do it. Evo. Yeah, anybody. Anybody just make take this current link where we are right now and put it into the chat of the old link, if you can. You don't have to, if you can, that would be really helpful, but no worries if you can't, and uh, sweet. Um, okay, I'm gonna start, this is episode 18. The theme for this show is drop D tuning. Maybe you don't know what that is, but I guarantee by the end of this program, you will be well aware of what it is. Let me just do a song to get started. This is from a band, whoop, let me get to the right page. This is from Nirvana. This is from 1993, written by Kurt Cobain. This is called All Apologies. How perfect the song to start with.
Seem okay? Yeah. Sorry, I don't know how much of that we got. No, we'll find okay. Not sure what's going on there, folks. We'll give it a couple more tries here. I'm not sure we're okay. All right, so the theme for this <laughs> episode is uh, drop D tuning, all right? The guitar has a specific kind of tuning for it. Standard tuning is usually based around E. So normally a guitar is tuned like this. E, A, D, G, B, and then E. That's your standard tuning. This is the tuning that most guitarists will use for most of their lives, most of their careers. That's kind of the way it works. The guitar avails itself with the capacity to easily use uh, alternate tunings. Because of this lovely machine head that's up here, I don't know if I'm in frame, but this lovely machine head allows you to very quickly and very easily detune strings to wherever you want them to be, and they stay there. It's much more difficult on a, on a violin or on a cello or on a double bass sometimes to detune strings because it's just, it's more involved. The machine, the machining here works really well. So drop D tuning, all that means is you take that very first note, this low E, which is normally an E, and you drop it to a D. So you've dropped the E to a D, which means you're going to be start playing songs often in the key of D because it's kind of this nice bass, bass root that's there. What that means, though, is that all the fingerings that you know in standard tuning are going to have to be slightly modified once you're playing in this new tuning. So, for example, if I were to play a, a G chord, right? Standard G chord in standard tuning looks like this. See how my fingers are sort of there? That's a G chord. Very lovely, very standard. Now, if we go drop D. If I were to do that very same shape, it doesn't sound the same. Why? Because this note that's here now is a step lower. So instead of it being a G, it's actually an F. It's kind of weird, right? Which means if I want to play a G chord, I'd have to modify my fingerings to play a G chord that way. So you have to modify your fingerings, but what happens is not only is it a pain, but sometimes you get really cool combinations of things that give you different sort of sounds and different different textures. So this drop D started being very started being popularized by bands in Seattle, bands like Nirvana, the very first song that I did, at least the first portion that you were able to hear, started popularizing this idea of drop D tuning. Nirvana, um, uh, uh, Sonic Youth. Uh, um, Soundgarden, they're all like this drop D because it just gives you this lower thing. The other lovely thing that it does is it sets you up if your first three strings are a power chord now because you have D, A, and D, which is a root, fifth, and an octave. So you get this lovely, which is what a lot of rock and roll chords are. It's just those first, it's the, it's the, it's the root, the fifth, and the octave. That's called a power chord. There's no third, there's no seventh, there's no nothing. It's just power. And what's lovely is just by... You get this great power chord. So it gives you, a, gives you this meaty, meaty bass with which to work with. So now the tuning in drop D is D, A, D, G, B, E kind of cool so gives you a slightly meatier sound and if you are using an electric guitar it makes it even beefier and meatier but of course meteor 
but of course you have to use different uh, different fingerings for some things. Now a lot of a lot of the fingerings are going to still work. A lot of the like you know if I don't play that low string, my G fingering still works fine. There's just no G in the bass. But you have to kind of think and modify stuff as you do it. So interestingly enough, that first song that I did, All Apologies, which has this. D is just singing out the whole time. It's very nice. It's such a beautiful thing. It's actually even a half step lower. So it's like drop D tuning, but even a half step lower, which means it's in C sharp. So it's so it's not not here, but but here. And the whole guitar is in drop D plus a half step. So it's C sharp, G sharp, C sharp, F sharp, A sharp, D sharp. And that's why it has that really meaty, lovely sound. I did it in D, though. I don't want to detune the guitar all the way down. Okay? Making sense so far? So here it is. All right. We seem okay? Everybody's there. Again, all apologies for the feed being all wonked out. I, 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 don't, know, I don't know what's going on. My sling studio was all set up, and it just it went to shoot, and it just... Back, I think. Yeah. Okay. I just changed the Wi-Fi carrier. Maybe that's part of it. I don't know. Uh, I'm in a 5G. I switched off the 5G because maybe that's. I don't know what's going on. We're gonna give this a couple more tries. If it if it if it cronks out, we'll just do this at another time. But I want to play these tunes because they're really really fun. Rush is a band that I adore. Rush, interestingly enough, does not have that many songs that are drop D tuning for as heavy a band as they can be, especially in the first part of their career. By 1993, when they were recording the song Counterparts, they started being retroactively inspired by bands that they inspired. How cool is that? They were on tour with Primus, and they loved what, what, what the guys in Primus were doing, and they had all alternate tunings and stuff and kind of heavy things. So they, when they got together to record their next album that was after Roll the Bones, which ended up being called Counterparts, they ended up having some heavier, meatier tunes, songs that were more more organic, less keyboards, less of the sort of production, uh, canned production that they had been using. I mean, Roll the Bones is a pretty rocking album, but there's still some pretty pristine production on there. They started using just loud guitars, loud bass through an amp being just played loud, less processing. And the album that resulted was called Counterparts, which is a wonderful return to form for the trio from Canada. And on that, the very this wasn't the first song on the album, but it was the first single from the album, is a song called Stick It Out. And this is a, this is a wonderful tune. It's a wonderful example of Neil Peart's uh, use of a sort of double entendre. He wasn't one to use a lot of double entendres, but uh, he uses it here. And it's the idea of stick it out, not just to expose oneself, but to have the wherewithal to keep fighting. Um, there's, there's, a, there's this lovely uh, stick it out, spit it out. This idea of like stick with it don't give up don't give up even though it's a very nasty dirty riff so here's the main riff that's kind of the main riff which again has this lovely lovely beautiful low D happening there throughout um, I love the fact that they were inspired by bands that they inspired so all those guys, like in, in, in uh, Soundgarden, that were doing drop D and low grungy stuff, who listened to Rush when they were kids the same way that I did, now Rush was listening to them and going, we got to get heavier again and get back to what we were doing kind of previously. So here it is from the album Counterparts, which is a fantastic record. I love that record so much. Everything, the, pa the packaging, all of it. It's the, last, it's the last Rush record that is based on a theme. Neil would do these themes of power and uh, magic and instinct um, and this one was counterparts and this is this idea of something which is its opposite and it's it's equal and that's what all these sort of songs are kind of about so this is called stick it out by rush <laughs> trust to your instincts if it's safely restrained Lightning reactions must be carefully trained. Heat of 
of the moment Curse of the young Spit out your anger Don't swallow your tongue Stick it out Don't swallow the poison Spit it out Don't swallow your pride Stick it out Don't swallow your anger Spit it out Don't swallow the lie Reflex Pendulum swing You might be too dizzy To do the right thing Trial under fire Ultimate proof Moment of crisis Swallow your pride, stick it out, don't swallow your anger, spit it out, don't swallow the lies. Stick it out. Each time we bathe our reactions in artificial light. Each time we alter the focus to make the wrong move seem right, you get so used to deception, you make yourself a nervous wreck, you get so used to surrender, running around to cover your neck. Such a fun riff to play. The boys used to say they loved playing this live because it's just such a you get this lovely dirty, dirty, dirty happiness that's in there all over the part. Um, in, for the album counterparts, they wanted a sense of balance between spontaneity and refinement. I thought that was really cool. Um, again, it's not a very common tuning up until that record. I don't think there's any drop alternate tuning that they use throughout most of their record. And then after that, they started using a lot more of it. They had a bunch of sort of low D stuff, some low C stuff, and it was really, really wonderful. Now, you might think that, excuse me, speaking of sticking it out, these songs are perfect for today. My God, all apologies, and stick it out. <laughs> speaking of uh, drop D tuning, you might think that it's only heavy songs. Only heavy tunes, uh, metal tunes use drop D, but actually sometimes you get some nice uh, folky songs that end up using an open a drop D or an open D tuning. We'll get to open tuning in a couple tunes. But there is an example of a song from 1970 by the band Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young, which I didn't even realize was a drop D song, but it officially is. And uh, this is the song Ohio. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> three the third song is the song Ohio this is written by Neil Young this is in response to the Kent State shootings that happened and what's amazing I didn't know this either uh, the song was released 10 days after Kent State happened so in 1970 
uh, there were a bunch of uh, army and national guardsmen, and they shot these four students that were there, killed, shot and killed these four students. And we're very used to in our instant instant culture and instant technology to have stuff, you know, you have uh, uh, auto tune the news doing songs the same night of a of a political address or something, and so we're kind of used to that now. But at the time, to have recorded and released a song just ten days after something happened was pretty amazing. And it was a single. It wasn't on an album. It was on a compilation later on, but it was uh, sort of released on its own. Um, and it's in D, it's in drop D. It doesn't need to be in drop D. It's basically just three or four chords. It's basically D, F, and C. D, F, and C. That's the verse. So you don't need this drop D in there. Yeah. It works totally fine in regular tuning. But if you add that, boating kind of sound which is perfect for the song so it's a D without a third so it's kind of a D2 there's no major or minor you could do minor you could also do major they kind of both work which is strange but it's just left open so again that droning D is there and the droning D over the F chord and the droning D over the C chord which is really kind of like oh it's just starting to get really nasty but because this drone is there has this idea of sort of a marching tenacity and something in the something in the firmament which is unsettling, which is perfect for this song. Here it is. Uh, there's a wonderful cover of it by the band Devo on an album called When Pigs Fly, Songs You Never Thought You'd Hear. If you want a treat, check out Devo playing Ohio. Here it is from 1970, written by Neil Young in just a day, recorded and released in just 10 days. <laughs>
Super powerful. Super powerful tune. Uh, luckily, we don't have to worry about those kind of things anymore. <clears throat> song number four is a rare example of one of my songs fitting the criterion. Criteria. Criteria. Uh, from 2005 on the album Intera Bang. I had a song called Barney's in the Vent, and it's the only song I have that's in drop D. I did it purposely because I wanted it to be heavy and munchy and crunchy and happy and slappy. Uh, this is a song which is about the television show Mission Impossible. Barney is uh, the gentleman who is always uh, working with the gadgets, and of course he's always in some air duct somewhere sweating away while the white people are at the at the party, poor Barney is in a vent somewhere uh, trying to figure out why the remote control isn't working. Barney's in, a, Barney's in some underground garage trying to determine why YouTube won't upload the goddamn stuff that you, yeah. Um, so I ended up writing this thing. It's, uh, this is, uh, it's on the Broad, Broad Street score, which is a string quartet version of my songs. Uh, this is my favorite, I think, arrangement from the Broad Street score. Not so much because it's a great arrangement, which it is, but it's a wonderful arrangement because it is how I met Vaco, my wonderfully fantastic Finnish ice giant friend and brother, uh, Vaco Rihu, who of course did the half of the arrangements for the Broad Street score. I literally said on Twitter, I'm looking for string arrangers, get in touch. And uh, Vaco got in touch and said, I'm interested. And I said, okay, give me 30 seconds of Barney's in the vent. What would you do? Figuring, like, I'll get that in a week or two. Uh, the next morning, he had sent me an arrangement of not just 30 seconds, but about a minute and a half with notes and all written out, and it was amazing. And I said, I like this guy already, and we have since become very, very close good friends. So this song led me to uh, to find Vaco on the other side of the planet, and uh, it's just the wonderfulness of what my endeavors have, have, have gifted me with. Uh, Slough, of course, did the other half of the arrangements on that particular piece, the Broad Street score, which uh, yeah, you can find a bunch of it on YouTube if you're curious about it. The other cool thing about this is there is a, a DJ who used to do pirate radio broadcasts in Vietnam. He was an army soldier and he did these secret pirate uh, radio broadcasts. His name was Dave Rabbit. And Dave Rabbit found this song on some podcasting network, and he loved it, and he played it on his show. He ended up interviewing me, and that was incredibly cool. Google Dave Rabbit, Vietnam DJ. He had these uncensored shows during Vietnam where he would just curse and do and play the music that the soldiers wanted to hear. He has the best radio voice ever. I think he's still with us, um, but that was a really, really cool thing. So here it is. From, from 2005, the album Intera Bang. This is Barney's in the Vent. The picture's thrown up on the desk The tape has turned to smoke I start to peel away my face There's one god left to choke stroke of luck devices hidden perfectly gas written on the truck Barney's in the vent Barney's in the vent
Barney's in the van. Barney's in the van. Barney's in the van. Secretary cannot know a thing And even if he did, he wouldn't sing the Secretary can't know who or how And even if he did, he'd disavow Very fun. If you ever play that song, if you're ever curious, don't forget you need the third and the second half of the riff. First half of the riff. That's what makes the riff. I've had people try to play this and they play that. You don't need that. You need the, the thirds versus. Anyway, if you're a guitarist and you're curious to play it. All right. I had mentioned open tuning before. So this next song is not officially drop D, but it has a drop D in it. It has the low D, but this is a tuning that's called dad gad. Now see if you can figure out what does that mean? What would dad gad tuning be? Well, it would be D, A, D, right? Dad G, right, which is fine. This is a B normally. We're going to go an A. A, D. So, D. Dad Gad, which is actually a D suspended chord, right? Like uh, Pinball Wizard, right? But it's that suspended. There's no third in there. And a particular guitarist from the '70s loved this tuning. A lot of folk players love this tuning. And now, for example, all of my fingerings that I would normally use on a standard tuning are out the window. So like my D chord is just not a D chord anymore. My G chord is not a G chord. My A is sort of an A but not really. So you have to have all new tunings for this thing. All new fingerings for this dad gad. Now some of you guitarists out there might know what I'm going to do. This is a song by uh, uh, from 1974 by a band called Led Zeppelin. And this is called Cashmere. Now the coolest thing, apart from the tuning of this song, is the rhythmic hemiola, which is happening throughout the song. What does that mean? Okay, a hemiola is one rhythm superimposed upon another. You all know this tune. Maybe you don't know the, 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 the name of it, but it's called Cashmere. And this is the main riff. Right? That's the main riff. We're all aware of that. What's happening is that rhythmic thing is in three. 
I know odd time was last episode, but I'm going to explain this because it's really cool what's going on. You've got three against four, but it's three against a half time four. So your basic beat is here. One, two, three, four. Boom. My skin, right? One, two, three, four. But against that, you have these groups of three. And it's not one, two, three. It's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, right? So one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three, 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 one, two, three. So it's one, two, three, four. It's two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Da 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 da. Which means you have a three-bar phrase. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right. So one, two, three, four, two. I can't do it. One, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, one. Crazy, right? So it's this driving thing that's happening. And then you get the next section. Which is one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two. So again, that weird three against four against two. So you got one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, da da da, da da da, da da da, and then da 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 one two three one two three one two three one two three one two one two one two three one two three one two three one two ba 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 ba. But it rocks like a mother. It's fantastic. It's totally singable. Listen to this tune and listen how shot Robert Plant's voice is. It's gone. It's gone. Even back then in 1974, it's gone. He's barely screaming them out, but it's so cool because it's this anguish. And the coolest thing about this, I thought, is he wrote it while he was in the Sahara. Uh, Plant wrote the words while he was in the Sahara Desert, which is nowhere near to Kashmir. He's closer to New Jersey than he is to Kashmir. But he called it Kashmir. So this is super fun to play. It's a challenge to sing and play, but hopefully I can do it. Listen to the three, listen to the four, and listen to the dad gad tuning. Here we go. Let's get cosmic, baby.
Mr. Brown As the sun burns to the ground And my eyes, they fill with sand scan this wasted land Trying to find Trying to find where I've been Pilot of the storm who leaves no trace like thoughts inside a dream Need the path and lead me to the place the Yellow desert stream A Shangri-La beneath the summer moon I will return again Sure the dust that floats up high in June When moving through Kashmir sail across the sea of years with no provisions but an open face along the straits of fear whoa, whoa. I'm down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a fun tune. Did you hear the three? And the four? And the two? Let me get back up the tune here. To show that uh, drop D tuning isn't necessarily inherent uh, for, you don't have to use it on guitar, or at least it provides a certain kind of interesting voicing, uh, I'm going to do one on piano, and actually let me show you what's going on on guitar just to explain. The next tune is by uh, the Foo Fighters, again a Seattle inspired band, <laughs> inspired by himself. Uh, this song has lovely drop D tuning, and instead of playing uh, uh, sort of D chords throughout this song, which would totally work. Uh, Dave Grohl is doing this very lovely F sharp minor over D. Get that low D there. And then he does an F sharp minor over B. And then a G. 
So it's a very, it's a very lovely. The song is ever long. I think I said that. <laughs> um, but I think it works. Oh, yeah. Um, I think it works very lovely on piano as well. This is David Letterman's, one of David Letterman's favorite songs. They actually played this when David Letterman had his heart attack and he came back after having his surgery. The Foo Fighters canceled one of their nights or rescheduled one of their nights and came and played it live on uh, The Late Show with Letterman to say they were glad that he was okay and back. And it was also played on the very last uh, Late Show with David Letterman, the very last night very last show they played it they had a little montage happening uh, whilst they played it so Dave Letterman loves this tune it's very very lovely uh, the Foo Fighters have played this song more than any other song live over a thousand times apparently someone has counted and um, yeah it's on an album called The Color and the Shape that's from 1997 and here it is by Dave Grohl and Foo Fighters yeah throw myself into and out of the red out of her head she sang come down and waste away with me down Slow how you wanted it to be Over my head, out of her head she sang And I wonder When I sing along with you Everything could ever be this real forever. If anything could ever be this real again. The only thing I'll ever ask of you, you gotta promise not to stop when I say when. She said. I 
sing along with you. If everything could ever be this real forever. If everything could ever be this good again. The only thing I ever ask of you. You gotta promise not to stop when I say when. pretty tune. He's really got an unbelievable gift for melody and for rocking out and for being generally pretty cool. There he is, Dave. There we go. Uh, song seven. I had to do one by this band. Oh, by the way, you can throw some money over there. Not that I would this time, but <laughs> um, PayPal, Venmo, uh, I really appreciate any kind of support that you can throw in this direction. I promise next time we will have all the kinks worked out. And uh, let me say this before I do the last song, while we still have a feed. A week from tomorrow, Saturday, February the 6th, I'll be doing a live geologic podcast right here on YouTube on my channel. Hopefully, um, that'll be 6 o'clock Eastern time. Please tune in. It's going to be really fun. Totally different from this. Not songs. It's going to be like my regular podcast, the podcast that I have over there at geologicpodcast.com. Please tune in, 6 o'clock, Saturday. I'll be taking some questions. We'll do a live Ask George. Think of some fantastic question you can ask me that I can answer with laser-like wit. That'll be uh, a, week from, a week from tomorrow, a week from Saturday, February 6th at 6 o'clock Eastern Time on the YouTube. The 700th episode of the Geologic Podcast will be live broadcasting from the jazz room upstairs i'm very excited for that okay song number seven is also from 1994 this has been a 90s fest i know but uh, forgive me um, that's my it's my jam uh this is a song written by chris cornell i couldn't i had a hard time picking one by soundgarden because there's so many uh uh spoon man right spoon man killer song Drop D. Really, really fun. I ended up doing this one because it's just a beautiful song, and I think most of you will know it. This was their most popular hit uh, from 1994 from the album Super Unknown. This is called uh, sp uh, this is called Black Hole Sun. Chris Cornell heard misheard a weather reporter. He thought the weather weatherman said Black Hole Sun, and he was like, "Well, that's a cool title." He went for a drive in his car for about 30 minutes, then he got his guitar, and in 15 minutes he wrote this song, apparently. So a total of about 45, 50 minutes he wrote this thing. It's a beautiful melody, and the, 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 the interesting thing about it is that it has this lovely chromatic motion. You're just going down by half steps. But it doesn't feel that way because the melody is so unbelievably gorgeous and interesting. Sing this melody to yourself and see how he doesn't repeat a note and it's just, it's j uh, that one. Such a cool, weird, singable, beautiful melody. Those songwriters out there, work on your melodies, please. Work on your melodies. Make sure your melodies work without lyrics. Make sure your melodies work without lyrics. And here's a perfect example of a song that works without its lyrics, without its vocal even. This is from 1994, Black Hole Sun, song number seven of seven songs. In my eyes, indisposed. Uh, let's try that again long fucking day. <clears throat> in my eyes, indisposed, in disguise as no one knows, hides the face, lies the snake, and the sun in my disgrace. Boiling heat, summer stench, 
Neath the black the sky looks dead Call my name through the cream And I'll hear you scream again Black hole sun, won't you come Wash away the rain Black hole sun, won't you come Won't you come, won't you come Stood a ring, cold and damp, still the warm wind, tired friend. Times are gone for honest men, sometimes far too long for snakes. In my shoes, walking sleep, in my youth I pray to keep heaven send hell away. No one sings like you anymore. Black hole sun, won't you come? Wash away the rain. Black hole sun, won't you come? Wash away the rain. Black hole sun, won't you come? Won't you come? There it is. Now you know what it is. Now you can use it to your heart's content. Thank you for tuning in. Sorry for all the technical garbage that was going on. It seems like once we switched the Wi-Fi carrier, we were okay. Thank you for coming over here from the other thing. Uh, again, this Saturday, next Saturday, a week from tomorrow, we'll be live for the 700th episode. And episode 19 of Seven Songs, since it's the middle of February, will be songs that have the word love in the title because Valentine's Day. So every song will have the word love in a title, and there's going to be some surprising songs. It won't be the ones that you might think. Um, thank you for tuning in. Thanks to Ms. Info for running interference as ever. Thanks to all of you for being on the chat. Throw a few bucks over there if you possibly can. It makes the ship go as ever. Check out geologicpodcast.com if you want to hear me talk about all kinds of things. And thank you. Be safe. Take care of each other. Wash your hands. And I'll see you on Saturday, a week from tomorrow, on the 6th. Okay.